how to get your content in front of a lot more people. Well, especially a lot more of the right people. This video is where I will give an overview, an authoritative overview of the seven ways that I recommend for authentically reaching more people with your content. So let's get going. First of all, I want to give you a quick start, which is, do you already get some engagement somewhere where you post content? Some of you, many of you already are using social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, you know, YouTube, um, I mentioned YouTube, um, threads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which of those places, if you already use them, do you already get some reactions and some comments when you post content? Because that is a great place to start, okay? Why not? Because, you know, you low-hanging fruit, okay? So where do you already get? Now, if you don't already use social media, well, let me be honest with you, it is really the most simple and easy way to get more reach with your content. You, you know people, you have friends, colleagues, maybe some past clients, some of you do, and supporters, et cetera. Most of them are already using some kind of social media. You might want to ask them which ones they prefer most. Give them a list of options. Do you, do you check out Facebook? Do you go on there and, and read some you know updates from your friends and family and colleagues and news websites? Do you use LinkedIn? Da, 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 da. You might give them a list and see which ones they vote on and choose the one that uh, most of them are on. Also, a very, a very good way to make a selection of which social media platform to use is very simple. Which ones interest you the most? Because the ones that actually, uh, where you find intriguing to consume content is where you're most likely to understand the etiquette of that platform and how that platform works so that when you post content, you're much more already in natural flow of the culture of that platform, okay? So if you're not using social media, you really are unnecessarily uh, handicapping yourself in terms of your content's visibility. So I recommend just even choosing one or two that intrigue you the most and hopefully ones where your existing audience are, are also there so that they can start to support you, your existing network. Okay, so besides that quick start, I want to go deep now into what is the most, well, I'll, I'll go into the seven methods now, but the first one I, I want to spend a bit more time on, which is the most, the biggest contributing factor to whether a piece of content spreads is whether it's a quality piece of content. I know that might sound so obvious, maybe. But let me explain what quality means. This is where most content creators get tripped up. Quality is not how you're judging yourself as you are either writing a piece of content or recording a video like this or recording a podcast episode or whatever creating that you're doing. When you judge, here's the, here's the truth of the matter. The more time you spend creating something, the more attached you become to that thing. And so therefore you become more blinded to what the rest of the world might think about the thing you're creating. And so what I've come to see as the only sane solution to stop judging your content and to stop, to stop loving it so much that you become blind to it also. So that's the, those are the sort of the two ends of the spectrum that uh, those watching might, might face. Some of you are judging yourselves too quickly and too much. Oh, I, this is not going to be good. Or uh, what do I have to say? Or I'm not creative today. Or gosh, there's so much more smarter and more charismatic people out there saying these things. Who am I to do it? You're judging yourself way too much. Okay. You're judging yourself way too much. And the reality is if you haven't said it, well, sorry about that. That's uh, it's my, <laughs> it's my Mac, my Mac natural. Uh, yeah. Thumbs up. Why not? If you haven't said whatever it is that you think is already being said out there, or someone else, can say, if you haven't said it, that means humanity is lacking an important perspective, your perspective. You've lived a unique life that no one else has lived, truly, no matter whatever experts out there, they haven't lived your life 
had the same combination of experiences, problems, learnings, conversations, genetics that you have. And so the way that you're saying whatever it is, it's going to be absolutely unique on its own. And it might even be something quite new and interesting for people. So don't judge yourself. Okay, Do not judge yourself. Put your content out there. Let the world tell you what's resonating with them. And then on the other end, do not work too hard on any one piece of content because you don't know. You really don't know if it's going to take off and people are going to resonate with so much or people don't really get it. I have now created, uh, let me just over, well, let me see, almost 2,000 videos. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see it's almost 2,000 videos there. And I've written um, over 500 blog posts. About 300 of them are on my website right now. The other 200 were early experiments that didn't end up. Anyway, I've written thousands of, I've created thousands of pieces of content. And the more I create, the more I I have to come back to this truth that I hope will, um, that you'll just keep reminding yourself of, which is you, you and I creators are not the right judge of our content. We have to allow our audience to react or not react to it, to comment or not comment, and to help us hone our understanding of what they really want. Okay. And, and not just, not, we're not just doing what they want, but we're finding that beautiful intersection. I always tell you about what we love on the one hand and what they love, our audience, ideal audience loves. And that intersection, that sweet spot in the middle is what we continually hone in on and find more and more as we put more content out there. Quality, okay, quality is not your own judgment or not just your own judgment. It, quality is in the eyes of the audience. What they naturally want to, not you forcing them to say, please like and subscribe and please add a comment here. Please, please support that's fine if you want to do that. But like their natural reactions to, oh my gosh, this is, this is, this is genuinely uh, immediately meaningful for me. Not immediate, meaning you have to be impress them in the first five seconds of your video. You can do that if you want to. But as they watch the video or read the article, if it's genuinely pulling some reaction from them, they're going to give you a reaction. They're going to give you a comment perhaps. And we're looking for those genuine reactions. And the only way we know is to put it out there. They will tell us what is quality. Quality doesn't have to be, oh my God, this was poetically written or the video editing was immensely you know, you, you know, uh, charming or entertaining or whatever. You, as you can tell, I don't edit any of my videos, basically. Very few of them do I edit. So most of my videos I don't edit. I just let it go out there. And I'm surprised always. Even some videos that are edited do not do as well as ones that are raw, but it's Whatever I'm saying or the energy that day or the framing of the topic, it was right on to the, to the mindset, heart set of my audience at this time. So quality, again, quality is what makes content naturally spread on its own for free. But quality is in the eyes of the audience. And all we can do, the only sane approach is not to keep judging ourselves and working so hard on a piece of content. I have... Again, having created thousands of pieces, let me give you the shortcut. I have spent hours creating or dozens of hours creating a piece of content. I put it out there. All I get back is crickets. All I hear is crickets chirping. <laughs> no humans are responding to it. People didn't get it. People didn't like it, whatever. Okay. All that time I felt was, oh my gosh, I, I got so attached. Versus I've also spent only minutes creating a piece of content. Usually it's a piece of writing or really quick live video. And it goes viral because whatever, whatever the idea was and the framing of the idea and the energy I brought to it was just right, just the right combination. So please don't judge. It's not how much time you spend on a piece of content. Let it go out there first. See if the audience reacts to it. And if they react to it well, then fine. You could polish that piece of content even more. You can edit the video now, or if it's a piece of writing, you can edit that piece of writing even more, add a better story to it or change or update the, the title to be even more interesting title. I call this the three stages of content. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up 
the three stages of content creation. Google knows my method by now, and you can find it on YouTube or on Google or AI search. AI chatbot will, will know it. So look up the three stages of content creation, and you'll see my method. Maybe you need it right by George Cow, and you'll see my method. And essentially, it's testing a lot of content and then take, noticing what works improving upon that thing even more and distributing even further. And then the third stage I'll talk about later, which is packaging content together. Anyway, so the first <laughs> the first reach method, I wanted to spend most time because it's most important, which is you must, um, not you must, but I highly recommend the three stages of content creation in order to produce quality content. So the first, the first method is quality content will spread itself, will get more reach on its own, okay? Method number one. Method number two, and actually at this point, I'm going to have to start looking at my own notes here. Now, method number two, um, which is one of my favorite methods really that I use all the time is social media ads. Okay. So if you are building a business, it's so normal and expected that you would spend money on advertising. I mean, which business that has succeeded in history doesn't spend money on advertising? I mean, most businesses who want to succeed, spend some money on advertising. That just makes sense, okay? It's just, it's logical. and But the way I do advertising is quite different. I don't just spend money advertising my products and my services. I spend a lot of my advertising budget on just getting my, my best content out there. Remember I said the three stages of content? Well, I noticed after all my testing, what content is naturally interesting to my audience they're naturally reacting to and i take those best pieces of content and i put social media advertising dollars behind it to get it to even more people for example facebook and instagram did you know you can spend just about ten dollars just ten dollars will help you reach a thousand of the right or likely the right people people who are likely going to resonate with your content with your energy etc cetera, etc cetera. Just ten dollars can reach a thousand of the right people. I mean, that is so cheap compared to what advertising has been in previous generations. Okay, so it's just it doesn't make sense not to do it if you have a business, particularly, and you want to spread your content so people can can experience your energy signature and can therefore get interested in looking at your offers and your products, services, etc. Okay, so Facebook ads, Instagram ads. YouTube ads, LinkedIn ads. I run these four on a regular basis. I teach courses on these things. If you're interested, you can study more with me on that. But um, social media ads, really good use of advertising dollars to get your content out there more. So that's the second method. The third method, I'm gonna look at my list here, is collaborations. And I also do this on a consistent basis. You'll notice that I interview people from my YouTube channel, people who are similar, who, you know, usually people who with, with a similar sized audience. Uh, who have a message I think is important to share with my audience. And oftentimes they're also interviewing me back for their audience or they're, they, they've supported me in some other important way that, um, that I find is reciprocal. Anyway, so collaborations, it's basically, think about this. You have a lot of niche mates. I don't call them competitors. I like to use the term niche mates, people who share the same so the same niche that you do. They provide the same kind of service or content to the similar to a similar audience that you do. Or it could be the same service that you provide, but to a, a, a relevant or different audience. That could be a niche mate too. Or they serve the exact same audience, but they provide a totally different service. So it could be any one of those combinations. But your niche mates, think about it. They are also working hard to expand their audience, to create content, to grow a business, and you are doing the same thing. So why not collaborate with each other? Don't be, you know, like I always encourage people to have an abundance mindset. I notice I, I do my best to collaborate with my most similar niche mates, people who do the exact same thing for the exact same kind of audience I do. I don't see them as competitors. I see them as partners. The more similar thing they do <clears throat> for the most similar audience, I see them as the best partners. Why? Because they are growing their audience. I'm growing my audience. Well, our audience are very similar. Why wouldn't we help each other discover, help our audiences discover each other? I just think it's best because there are a bunch of people here, my audience, who 
might never buy from me, but who might be perfect for one of my niche mates. Why would I hold that back from you? If, if, if I'm not the right service provider for you, I want you to find the right person that I would endorse that you know they share the same values as me. I endorse their skills. Why wouldn't I introduce you to them? Of course I would. And you should go with them if I'm not the, you know, if, 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 if we both sell the same thing and my thing is not right for you, I want you to buy from someone I, I endorse and trust, right? And the same thing with my, my friends, you know, my colleagues, if their audience, they, some of their audience will buy from them, but some of the audience won't for whatever reason, not the perfect energy signature match, not the right offer match, but, but I have something perhaps that's right for them. Then they would be, my colleague or friend would rather be the person who helps you to find, helps the, that person to find the right match, right? So we just want to be um, one of my niche mates, wonderful, uh, you know, marketing teacher, Tad Hargrave. His website is marketingforhitbeats.com. He calls it hub marketing. Like you want to be a hub for people. Like the, your, your audience finds you, not only your services, your content to be useful, but you also introduce them to a bunch of really worthwhile um, creators and service providers. So you want to be a hub and you want to find hubs, especially the abundance-minded, generous-minded people, generous-hearted people to work with, to collaborate with. So collaborations, wonderful way to get your content out there. For example, interviewing each other or sharing each other's content, et cetera. Okay. So that's a third method. Fourth method is your email newsletter. Now, I, I want to mention this because a lot of people have neglected Maybe some of you watching this have neglected your email newsletters. Like you have an email list, even if it's 50 people, it doesn't have to be huge, but even if it's 50 people, some of you have hundreds of people, right? They are people who consciously, I assume, they consciously subscribe to, to hear from you on, a, on some kind of regular basis. You, it's like the most basic thing. Please send them a monthly newsletter. Now, you might say, George, I don't know what to send them. Let me give you a shortcut, okay? If you look at my monthly newsletters, if you go to georgecow.com slash monthly, you'll see three actual monthly newsletters that are the most recent from me. Copy that, copy that formula, copy that um, format because it's work, it works so well. I'll tell you, I have an email list of about 5,000, over 5,000 now, 5,000 people subscribe to my monthly newsletter. And my email open rate is over 50% on average for every newsletter I send. Sometimes upwards of 50, 58% I've gotten even recently. So it's always above 50% and up 50 to 58%. That is way higher than most people who have my size of list. If you have only a few dozen, a few hundred, you might get up to 50 to 70% open rate. But when you get up to the thousands, it usually go down to 30%, 20%. Why still have over 50%? What I'm trying to say is my format works. Just copy it if you want to. My format is very simple. It only takes me 15 minutes a month to put my email newsletter together and send it. It's just basically, I'll, I'll give you real quick. Unless you go, you should go look at it, but I'll just quickly tell you. It's just my best three pieces of content recently. That's it. Or if, if for whatever reason you haven't created consistently, take your best three pieces of content from whenever. And it could be as old as you want to. And put that in your monthly newsletter. And every month, feature another three best pieces of content. Very simple and very quick to do. So, email newsletter once a month. I think it's I think it's a must because it's so easy to do, and people signed up to hear from you. So why why don't you let them hear from you and they might share it? Okay, that's reach method number four. Reach number method number five is to launch a packaged piece of content. Remember earlier I said the three stages of content creation. I said stage one is to just test as much as you can. Just test content, create lightly, and test it out there. Stage two is to take the best of your stage one and then improve it more and distribute it even further using some of the methods I've just told you. Okay. And stage three, now let's talk about the stage three. This I call this a separate reach method, which is to take the best of your stage two pieces of content. Take the best of your stage two, categorize them into themes, and then package those themes together. For example, as a YouTube playlist or video playlist, or as a uh, as a series of blog posts that you well, guess what? Put together into a book. That's how I do it. I take I take my best blog posts, I categorize them, and each category becomes its own book. I call I call it the blog to book method. 
I teach a whole course on the method with checklists and things like that if you're interested. But whenever you launch a book or like a packaged piece of content, an online course, you give concerted effort to announcing it, to launching it, particularly a book, you will find almost no other announcement you, or no other post you make on social media will get as much appreciation and celebration as when you launch a book. And I've just told you the simple way of launching a book. Take the best of your blog posts, categorize them, and launch each theme as a separate book. Now, don't launch multiple books at once. You should launch one book at a time so you can you can utilize that, that celebration your audience will have. So anyway, packaged piece of content, for example, a book, that's number five. Number six is search engine optimization, SEO. You may have heard of it. I teach a whole course on this, but basically SEO, I'll just give you a quick shortcut, is to study what the search engines are featuring at the top for various types of searches. Because whatever the search engines features at the top are what they've noticed that humans are clicking on and not coming back to the search engine. It's called uh, terminating the search. What that means is the search engine notices, oh, when someone searches how to train a dog, okay, they tend to click on these links. And of all these links, the links that get people not to come back to us to try to find another result is the, is, should be the winner because it gets them to terminate the search, meaning they're happy with whatever it is. So as you study the best search results and the keywords nowadays, Google, when you, when you ask a question on Google, it will tell you. People also ask these other questions. Those are big clues to what is being searched on the search engine. Notice what, what's being searched and notice what the top search results are and try to, and try to if, if the top search results, you think, gosh, I could do better than that. I could create better information, better, uh, um, more engaging information, then do it. And you'll tend to rise up in the search rankings for whatever keywords you're, 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 you want to be found for. It's number six. Number seven, and I'll end this video because it's getting a bit long here. Number seven is individual outreach. Don't forget, you still have supporters. You have some past clients, perhaps, but you have friends, you have colleagues, you have other people who support your business and career. If you have never, if, if it's been a long, long time since, or you've never done this, write a list of your supporters. Write a list, I mean, really open up a document or a notebook and start writing a list of names of people who support your business or career or who will likely support if you, if you ask them, friends, fa certain family members, certain colleagues, certain acquaintances, maybe current clients, past clients, write down a list of names. You see my, your list of names is gonna be at least dozens. Some of you have a list of several hundred names, individual outreach. When you create a piece of content, especially a stage two piece of content, like email 10 of those people on the list, you know, that are relevant and write a custom introduction to say, I thought about you for this because of this reason. It's an individual outreach. A lot of people have forgot to do that. And a lot of people don't do it. And so when you are one of the few who does it thoughtfully, you will stand out. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. It's kind of a long video. I look forward to seeing, are there any other reach methods that you enjoy that I, I didn't mention? Feel free to comment below. And if there's any updates, I will also add comments below. Thanks.